Hey guys, we are finally back in action and we are coming to you from the pantry. It is the beginning of May and boy oh boy, the pantry is still going strong, but we are starting to deplete down a few items. So today we're going to go through a beginning of May pre garden season tour and we're going to talk about a few changes that we're actually uh, making in our diet and in what we're going to be preserving for the 2024 growing season. So one thing you're probably thinking as you look at this pantry is it still looks just as full as last time and it sort of portrays that way but one thing if you'll remember I have a lot of stuff on the bottom that was storage in boxes that I've been bringing to the top as we've needed it you know that song it plays in your mind again. So August stew, salsa, pasta sauce, all those things really don't look very depleted, but I don't have any down below anymore. So what you're seeing on these shelves is what's left to see us through until August. A recent discovery that I've made is that I am pretty positive I'm diabetic. I had gestational diabetes with both my children 10 years ago, and I will admit I've been terrible and not followed through with much testing. So after my 45th birthday this year, I decided I was going to test and find out for sure whether it had become a problem or not. And sure enough, through home testing, it has become apparent that there is a problem. So this is where you're starting to see some gaps behind, like these beans here, for example. We are changing our diet to be a little bit more diabetic friendly and keto kind of style to help kind of curb the blood sugars. And one of the things that we have learned through testing is the beans are not going to be, a, I should rephrase that, the dry beans are not going to be a big part of our diet anymore. So basically what we've been doing for the last month is I've been trying these meals that I put in jars and I've been testing after them to see how they affect my blood sugars. And that has led to some changes in how we're going to be putting food away for this year and what we're going to be growing in the garden. So if you want to see those kind of tidbits about what we're going to be doing and how the garden is going, you're going to have to follow Hickory Croft Farm channel to make sure that you don't miss out on that stuff. But one thing, and I've been talking about this for numerous pantry tours now, is jams, jellies, syrups, all that stuff is pretty much out for me or very controlled. So we're going to have to get creative this year with coming up with different ways to sweeten things, whether it is a little bit of honey or the big one that we're going to be growing in a big way is stevia. So I'm super pleased that a lot of my stews and soups have been excellent in my readings and that is fantastic because one of my favorite soups summer's best vegetable soup had a lot of potatoes in it we were a little concerned about this one i will be doing a video on this because i don't think i have yet if i have i will link it but i don't think i have so next time i make it we will do this as a video but all the soups lamb stews that sort of stuff have come back with great readings so i can keep going with the things that i love to have in my pantry and definitely make some changes on the store-bought pantry. That's the one that we're really noticing we're making some changes on is those items that we were stockpiling or changing. But we're going to get to that a little bit later in this video. So right now I'm sitting in front of the overstock area. One thing I will say in previous pantry tours, some of this overstock area was stored in other parts of our pantry and basement because there wasn't enough room on these shelves. So you can see we have depleted it quite a bit. It's cobweb there. <laughs> but... We also have some stuff that actually was canned up in 2024 already on these shelves too. So we're still working at restocking as we go, but we've got plenty of our canned lamb meat. That's something that we did already for 2024. More lamb broth and things like our Moroccan stew, tomato juice, and definitely the ketchup are really holding strong. One thing that I am finding this year with still tracking everything that we take from the pantry to bring upstairs to eat is we don't go through as much ketchup and barbecue sauce as I originally anticipated we would. So far for this year, we're at beginning of May, I've only used seven jars in total. And I have about 24 jars of ketchup and I think 16 or 17 jars of barbecue sauce. So I think we're gonna be good on that for a little while. One thing I am gonna say, and I say this over and over again, is this has to last us until August. Basically till the Every Bit Counts Challenge comes again for 2024. That's when the canning season really kicks into gear. Prior to that, we have drying and herbs and all that sort of stuff, but not a lot of canning because it's just not ready yet in the garden. But we're still tackling eating things like the applesauce, which is three years old now. Things like that that we're really discovering we don't consume that much of. And we're probably going to be rationing a little bit more in the future. So 
it looks really full now, but I'm quite curious to see if we can keep it stocked as we go into the new growing season. And this is the meager supply that is left of our squash. We've got a few Canada Crookneck that are still holding strong, starting to get a little bit soft on the ends, so we're gonna have to get these used up really quick. And I'm really glad that I brought you over here to show you these because I made a discovery. And it's kind of a sad one. Our big Kershaw squash are going soft. I don't know if you can fully see it, but it kind of squeezes in a little bit. They still sound pretty good, so we're going to have to get these cooked up and preserved somehow really quickly. One thing that we never really talk about a lot in these tours is our old kind of dodgy fridge <laughs> down in the dreaded basement. But one thing we store in here is eggs. And as you can see, we've got a bit of overflow here. Eggs are still being pumped out. This is the time of year when eggs are quite abundant on the homestead anyway. So we use the fridge to preserve those. So in total right now, including all those ones that are in the overflow on the side, we have 28 dozen eggs, which is really, really nice. Even if they are silky eggs, which means we use more. I find 18 silky eggs is about the same as 12 regular chicken eggs. But the other thing that's in here is our yogurt. And I'm going to go back to, I'm going to stop, I'm going to close the fridge and we're going to have a chat. Talking about this now that we've been in the fridge with our yogurt, we are still making our yogurt from store-bought, not store-bought, but creamery-bought milk. I will link the video above for our yogurt recipe from that. But that is where I'm going to come back to the syrup discussion. One thing that we're finding is I don't seem to have a huge problem with doing yogurt with a nice oat granola and a little bit of the syrup. Now, granted, I have to control the amount, but it seems to not bother me too much. That oat in the granola seems to really kind of counteract the sugars in the syrup. So we are still going through this. And one thing I'm going to put out there for all my viewers is I am desperately looking for a way to use stevia in my syrups instead of sugar or another sort of sugar replacement, I guess you could say. I don't want to use chemical sweeteners, so I do grow a lot of stevia. So definitely let me know in the comments if you've got some ideas of how I can make these sort of things work to continue using them in our diet. So as we're walking by the freezers in the pantry area, I'm not going to touch too much on these because as sad as it is for me to admit this to you guys, I already need to do another freezer clean out and organize. It has just gotten messy. We've bunged things in, moved things around, and I can't find anything all over again. So stay tuned because we're going to kind of go through these and see what we have left after the winter season and what needs to get used up before we start putting the produce from 2024's growing season in these freezers. So next we're going to talk about the potatoes because this is the last item really that we have that is still from our growing on the homestead and I have to admit because I'm watching my carb intake I haven't looked at these potatoes in quite some time and I have a feeling that they probably need the legs taken off I've been really 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 good at doing that this year which has made them last an amazing amount longer actually they're not bad they're not bad they're starting they're getting a little bit soft but all in all not too terrible we have three boxes here that have about half full of the different varieties that we grew this year. So hopefully these will hold until summertime. The Yukon Golds are definitely keeping the best. They are still very nice and firm. Again, I need to come and break these legs off, but all in all, I am super happy with the potatoes and I think we have finally found that sweet spot of how much we need to grow for the year in order to feed ourselves right through to the next season. Starting off here with the potatoes in this discussion, Chris, being the wonderful, wonderful partner and husband that he is, is wonderfully compiling a spreadsheet of all the things that I can eat, can't eat, and things we should watch. And it's really interesting as we go through testing to see how those carbs are affecting me. So what we're finding by compiling this information and making a spreadsheet and chart and gathering it all is that some carb items and vegetable items and things like that are perfectly fine. Not a problem or controlling the portion size I can still consume. But then there is stuff that is just completely out off the table. It doesn't matter how small the portion size is, it sets me off. And that's the stuff we're going to talk about in a second right behind me here because this section right here is going to be the biggest change when the next pantry tour comes. So one thing that we do still have sitting around 
is flour. White flour, whole wheat flour, oat flour, lots of different flours. And we've been experimenting, playing with what ones are okay to eat and what ones aren't and what amounts I can consume. And definitely it sort of seems like they're all kind of a little questionable at this point. But the one thing that is definitely going is our white flour. And Chris has a little project going, which will be featured on Hickory Croft in the upcoming couple weeks, probably. I don't know. Don't hold us to that. But he has a plan for this. So it is still in our pantry, along with some wheat germ and things like that, um, that we will be eventually freeing up this space to start stockpiling those items that uh, maybe we are going to consume a little bit more of when we didn't before. So as many of you will remember from the wonderful grocery haul video we did where we managed to acquire maple syrup at a fantastic deal. We stockpiled what we thought was going to be two years worth of maple syrup. It's probably now going to be 10 years worth of maple syrup because that's about how much maple syrup I can consume. So as you can see here, we've got quite the stockpile and this is going to last a while. So I know I said the potatoes were the last part on this tour that we had produced here on the homestead, but I forgot that we actually have our apple juice and our lamb's broth over in this corner as well. And both those are holding strong. We did 104 jars of apple juice last year, and I bet you we've gone through, I'm going to say not half, but more than a third of it anyways. It's something that we're a little bit more rationed on. We use it in smoothies, things like that, but we don't drink it in glassfuls all that often anymore. So it's something that's definitely going to be lessened on our harvest for next year, but it's still a very, very valuable product that we can grow and create or make or preserve right here on the homestead. Another thing that we've kind of made a transition to is that we're only going to be using brown and black rice, no more, and wild rice too, if we happen to be able to get it at a reasonable price, no more white rice. And that makes me sad because I absolutely love white rice. It is just mm, so good in my mind. But unfortunately we have like five bags of white rice because we stockpiled it. Cause I'm sure at some point someone said there was going to be a rice shortage or something. And we thought we better get it. But anyways, now we're changing over to stocking a little bit of the brown rice, not as much and as high quantities because we're trying to stick to what is an actual portion size on these items. But it's still something you're going to see creeping back into our stockpile items, just in a different form. And then on this side of the pantry, we really have kind of all those items that are for granola or trail mixes, that sort of thing. Definitely lots of nuts. Almond flour is something we've really taken to when we really want to make those baked good treats. It's not something we eat on a regular basis, but if it's a birthday or something like that, I made the most amazing almond flour birthday cake with icing and everything. It was incredible. And only, what did it have? It less than a cup of sugar in the icing and the cake as a whole. It was, and I thought for sure it was not going to taste good. It was amazing. It was like the best chocolate cake I've ever had. So I will be making that again. I just have to have a really good reason <laughs> to make it. But when I do, I will be sure to share it. This box here, and this whole area of pasta type products really will eventually be cleaned out. This is all marshmallows, condensed milk, lots of kind of junk foody items sort of. And uh, that's not something that's going to be staying because I have a very, very hard time avoiding eating and making things with those type of items. So they're just better if they're not here for right now. S the pasta is something that we're not getting rid of it. We've slowly been cooking it and feeding it for the chickens as treats. And eventually it will go. We're just not buying any more of it. So one thing I'm sure you're picking up on and noticing is we do have munchy snack items on the pantry shelves, whether it's the covered bridge potato chips or nachos or veggie straws, all those things we've done tests. As long as I stick to what is an actual portion size, I really don't have too much of a bad reaction to it. Although I have to admit it is wild what is an actual portion size compared to what we used to consume of those products. But it's okay, we're still stockpiling them so that we have them when you want that little quick snack. Sometimes the kids also take those for lunches. So that's why those are there. But right behind me here is more of the dried spices that we had from last year and from 2022. I'm not going to go too much into the spices situation because also, as you can see over here, I have a whole bunch of uh, curries and all those other spices that are a big jumbled mess here. And 
My shelf upstairs is an absolute tip disaster. I can't put any more jars on it and I have a real hard time finding the things I need. So coming up, we're going to do a video organizing and analyzing, I guess you could say, just what we have in spices so that we can plant and grow what we actually need this year to restock the things that only need to be restocked. So stay tuned because that's gonna be a fun one because I don't even know what's up there. So really, as you can see, the pantry is holding up very well. We really haven't been spending that much on groceries, hence why I haven't done a grocery haul video because we really haven't needed anything. But what you're mostly seeing is jars, jars everywhere. There's jars, empty jars everywhere, and it is getting out of control. I didn't even realize I had as many jars as I did. It is going to be a busy canning season getting these all filled back up. That is for sure, so stay tuned. But last thing I want to talk about before we end this tour is Dollarama chai seeds, organic chai seeds. $1.75 for this little container. It is 160 grams. Honestly, best deal we can find on chai seeds. It's amazing. And they were in Dollarama of all places. So if you happen to be in there and you like chai seeds, certainly check it out. At least at our Dollarama, they had them. Otherwise, really the only thing that's worth talking about too much here on these shelves is the things of the lemon juice and my vinegars and sauces. Those are all things. Oh, and our honey. We've got a couple things of honey, local honey as well. But all in all, nothing is really changing too dramatically in those departments. So I do have to say, honestly, we thought prior to going through all this process over the last month, that we were eating really, really well. And that is something that we are learning now is not always the case. So stay tuned because we're gonna go through a lot more discussion on these types of things as we learn. We're gonna share what we learn with you guys. 